Shalom. My name is Adam, and I welcome you to the parable of the vineyard. Every day, Yahuwah is waking up a remnant, a group of people who are coming out of deceptions, realizing our walk is to consist of faith and obedience to His righteous commands. Each week, we read through and examine a portion of the Torah, allowing the Spirit of the Most High to guide, teach, and open our eyes and ears to the wondrous matters out of His law. Join us as we seek to be refined by His Word, preparing ourselves for the return of our King of Kings, being faithful and obedient, walking in His way, truth, and life. Hey, Shabbat Shalom, and welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Parable of the Vineyard. My name is Adam, and I welcome you. This is week 25 of our Torah portion reading and study, which is going to cover Leviticus 6, 8 through 8, 36. Uh, the Torah portion is called Sav, which means commands. Uh, we'll see more of the stuff we saw last week with the Ola offering, the burnt offering, and the Mincha, the grain offering, and uh, the consecration of the priests, and much more. And uh, like last week, you know, many more spiritual things to to glean, uh, in my opinion. So uh, let's pray real quick. Heavenly Father, Yahweh Most High, we, we come before you and bless you in Yahushua's name. Father, we thank you for this Shabbat that's here before us. We thank you for the rest that you've appointed and given us, Father, as a gift. We thank you for your word. We thank you for drawing us out of the world in, in our own ways. Father, we thank you for showing us your ways, which are certainly higher than our ways, Father. We thank you for sending your son, Yahusha, the refreshing, the word, the forgiveness of sins, the spotless lamb. Father, we would just want to follow him with all of our heart, soul, and mind. So we ask you to help us that we may bring forth the fruits that you desire from our lives. In Yahusha's name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, I got a shofar here. If you guys want to get your shofars, let's blow them together. Praise Yes, Some of you out there uh, may have just celebrated Yom Teruah. So hey, some of you have some fresh practice. Let's, let's blow shofars together on three. One, two, three. Praise, yeah. So in case you're wondering why my face is not here, uh, th those of you that have been following along uh, over the uh, last couple months or so, this this week's, this week's year's tour portion cycle, I've had uh, just issues and uh, I've replaced the camera. I've um, done almost anything, everything I could. I've looked at all the suggestions. Uh, some of you mentioned looking at the white clip, the, the black clip. Um, it's it's uh, green screen terms. And nothing seems to work. I thought I had it fixed the other day with uh, the Jubilees uh, and solar calendar study recording. But uh, anyways, here we are. And uh, so praise you. Yeah, I figured it would just be a lot less uh, um, distraction with just without the camera flickering and all that this week. So uh, maybe it's maybe it's even better this way. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I would like to start uh, with um, let's start with uh, Mark 12, 28 through 34. Uh, I just want to read this. Um, before we get started, we'll read it again uh, through the Torah portion. And as a reminder, uh, if I happen to go too fast or anything, remember there's always uh, study notes in the description box below. So Mark 12, 28 to 34 says, And one of the scribes came, having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Yahushua answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, Yahuwah Elohim is one. And you shall love Yahweh Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, you have said the truth, for there is one Elohim, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And these are kind of the sentiments we, we left off with last week. For those of you that were able to watch all the way to the end, we, end, uh, we ended with uh, Sirach 35, I believe, off the top of my head, which really, I think, shares the heart of what Yah is really looking for. And uh, this man, he, he said it right, is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Yahushua saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, you are not far from the kingdom of Elohim. And no man after that durst ask him any 
questions. So just uh, before we get back into the, uh, the midst of Leviticus here with these animal sacrifices and uh, just sharing the heart of Yah, what he really is looking for from us. <clears throat> So, with that being said, let's get to the Torah portion. We will stu- still do the uh, the word audio reading, and uh, then we'll we'll so we'll have the word audio play chapter six verses eight to the end, and then we'll come back and want to mention a few things on chapter six, and we'll do likewise for seven and eight. So let's go ahead and listen in chapter six verse eight. Vaikra, Leviticus chapter six, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe saying. If a soul sin and commit a transgression against Yahuwah, and lie unto his neighbor, in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, or has deceived his neighbor, or have found that which was lost, and lies concerning it, and swears falsely, in any of these that a man does sinning therein, then it shall be, because he has sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he has deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found, or all that which he has sworn falsely, he shall even restore it in the principle, and shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto him to whom it appertains, in the day of his trespass offering. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto Yahuwah, a ram without blemish out of the flock, with your estimation for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before Yahuwah, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he has done in trespass therein. Sorry, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Command Aaron and his son, saying, This is the Torah of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh, and take up the ashes which the fire has consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments, and put on other garments, and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, it shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. And this is the Torah of the meat offering. The sons of Aharon shall offer it before Yahuwah, before the altar. And he shall take of it his handful of the flour of the meat offering, and of the oil thereof, and all the frankincense which is upon the meat offering, and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savor, even the memorial of it unto Yahuwah. And the remainder thereof shall Aharon and his sons eat with matzah. Unleavened bread shall it be eaten in the holy place, in the court of the tabernacle of the assembly they shall eat it. It shall not be bacon with leaven. I have given it unto them for their portion of my offering made by fire. It is most holy, as is the sin offering, and as the trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aharon shall eat of it. It shall be a statute forever in your generations, concerning the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire. Everyone that touches them shall be holy. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, This is the offering of Aharon and his sons, which they shall offer unto Yahuwah in the day when he is anointed. The tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meat offering perpetual, half of it in the morning and half thereof at night. In a pan it shall be made with oil, and when it is bacon, you shall bring it in, and the bacon pieces of the meat offering shall you offer for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And the priest of his sons that is anointed in his stead shall offer it. It is a statute forever unto Yahuwah. It shall be wholly burnt. For every meat offering for the priest shall be wholly burnt, it shall not be eaten. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aharon and to his sons, saying, This is the Torah of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before Yahuwah. It is most holy. The priest that offers it for sin shall eat it. In the holy place shall it be eaten. In the court of the tabernacle of the assembly, 
Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy. And when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, you shall wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy place. But the earthen vessel wherein it was sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen pot, it shall be both scoured and rinsed in water. All the males among the priests shall eat thereof, it is most holy. And no sin offering, whereof any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle of the assembly, to reconcile with all, in the holy place, shall be eaten. It shall be burnt in the fire. Okay, praise God. Let's go back to the beginning of chapter 6. A couple things I want to want to point out. Sorry about the confusion at the end. Uh, I forget, had forgotten last week that... Uh, Leviticus 6, 1 through 7 was not included in the previous week's word audio. So instead of starting at verse 8, we started at verse 1. So sorry about the confusion there. But uh, let's uh, let's go back here. So uh, verse 9 is talking again about the Ola offering. Just remember from last week, the Ola is the whole burnt offering, the burnt offering which was symbolizing a full surrender of the worshiper, symbolized by... Uh, so symbolized by the victim, the animal to Elohim, and full surrender and consecration uh, must come before fellowship with, with Elohim. Um, a reminder about this, about the whole burnt offering, we, we went into pretty good detail last week, but just uh, some some verses that I actually missed, uh, not missed, just kind of skipped last week. I want to read them this week because I knew we'd be talking about it. Um, again, Psalm 119, 1 through 10 says, Blessed are the undefiled in the way of who walk in the law, the Torah of Yahuwah. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. So not faint-heartedly, not half, half-heartedly half or half-you-know-what. <clears throat> um, it's We're supposed to do it diligently with all of our heart. This should be the focus of our lives. So when Messiah says things like, uh, uh, he who does not forsake his mother or son or daughter, or, you know, or wife for me is not worthy of me. <clears throat> Obviously, he's not telling us to forsake our families because he instituted the family. The family is is the stronghold uh, uh, to to perpetuate righteousness in the Torah and whatnot. Obviously, what he's what he's saying there is, you know, nothing should come before the service and dedication of our lives to Yahuwah, right? And um, Anyway, so continuing, Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart when I shall have learned your righteous judgments. I will keep your statutes. Oh, forsake me not utterly. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to your word. And listen to this. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. And it's interesting, the people who are seeking him today... Um, it was spoken about in Isaiah 65, I think. All right, <clears throat> with my whole heart have I sought you. Uh, and then it says here in Isaiah 65, I am sought of them that asked not for me. I am found of them that sought me not. I said, behold me, or you know, look at me, look at me, right? Unto a nation that was not called at my, by my name. I have spread out my hands all the day unto a rebellious people, which walks in a way that was not good after our own thoughts. So he's comparing them, you know, the the people today, the assemblies today, in my opinion, versus the the um, the rebellious nation of Yashorel uh, in previous past. Uh, they're, they're Paul likens them to two different sons. Um, physical Israel was uh, likened to Ishmael and Hagar, uh, whereas the children of the promise, those that um, have the righteousness of faith through Messiah Yahusha and keep the commandments, right? Keep the Torah uh, are likened to the children of the, of the promise of, of Isaac. And uh, so any case, uh, let's get back on track here. I don't want to get too much on a rabbit trail, but well, kind of. So Romans 10 is where Paul actually kind of quotes that. And uh, let's see. Mm hmm. Here, yeah, but yeah, but Isaiah is very bold. This is Romans ten twenty and twenty one. Isaiah is very bold and says, "I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he says, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. And uh, well, there's still that group that the remnant of that family who has denied Messiah and who who this is talking about are still around today and have multiplied again today, and are inhabiting." Uh, that land today. 
James 4, 7 through 10, submit yourselves therefore to Elohim, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. The reason I'm bringing this passage up and the others, uh, specifically Psalm, what it's talking about, with my whole heart have I sought you, is to me, this is just a reminder of the spiritual implications of the Ola, the whole burnt offering. Remember, everything was totally consumed. And we know that uh, in, um, in Romans 12, Paul says that, uh, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Elohim, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Elohim, which is your reasonable service. So this living sacrifice reminds me of this whole burnt offering, a total dedication, everything. And this is, these, remember, this is not, um, this is not some, he's, they're not like burning like a, a, a dollar five-star notebook from Walmart, you know, on the altar. This, these are expensive uh, animals. This is this is this was wealth back then. This was worth a lot of money. Uh, exactly what it would be equated to today, I don't know, but it certainly wasn't cheap. Um, this whole burnt offering and the next one again, the mincha, the grain, um, the 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 oil, the frankincense. These things were not cheap. But uh, anyways, the the point being is the reminder here is to give everything we have to Him, not halfway. Uh, not part way, but everything to him. And that's echoed in Hebrews 11. I think it's eleven six. Yeah, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to Elohim must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So not people that seek him, you know, for an hour on the weekends, uh, on, on Saturday, or even people even people in, in the movement today. You know, uh, he's not looking for someone that just seeks him for a couple, like an, an hour or a couple hours on Shabbat. This is a whole... It's a whole consuming thing. This 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 walk is is it's our whole lives. So sorry, James four seven. Submit yourselves therefore to Elohim. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh or or get close to Elohim, and he will get close to you. So we've got to make the moves. He's waiting for us, and that's that makes sense to me. And it's his right. So we got to make the move. He loved us first, right? Now it's our move. You know, if this was like a like a game of chess, it's not. But he made his move. He's like, I love you. I demonstrated my love to you in many ways. Specifically, Messiah, my son, I sent to you, right? And so we should in turn say, ooh, yes, I want to get close to you. And he will get close to us. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts. You double-minded, be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of Yahweh, and he shall lift you up. And that's... He teaches the humble. When people start getting proud, <clears throat> start pr getting proud and know it alls, it's like it's like he turns it off, right? He's like, I'm not interested. I'm not interested in prideful people. Psalm 25 tells you who he teaches. Psalm 25, 9, the meek will he guide in right ruling, and the meek will he teach his way. He doesn't teach the proud. <clears throat> um, back to Leviticus 6, um, verses um, mm, Let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Verses 12 through 13. And it says, The fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. And the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and lay the burnt offering in order upon it. And he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. Listen to this. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. You know. You're reading this and you're like, I know there's some spiritual implications to this, right? There, There is. <clears throat> and, you know, we've, we've talked about it. Um the, the, the fire was never to be put out of the candlestick uh, in Leviticus 24. Um, let's just go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and pull that up. <clears throat> Leviticus 24, and Yahweh spake to Moses, saying, The command of the children of Israel that they bring unto you pure olive oil beaten for the light to cause the lamps to burn continually. If some of you remember remember this, we talked about it actually uh, in Exodus when we were looking at the uh, the construction of the menorah and what it symbolized. It symbolized, of course, the light. The Torah is the light. Uh, Proverbs 6.23 says the commandment is a lamp and the Torah is light. Obviously, some spiritual implications of how the Torah should be burning in the hearts of his people uh, continually. Same thing, this fire. You know, So if we are supposed to be um, living sacrifices upon the altar— Right? He's saying the fire on the altar never goes out. And that fire, that fire inside of us um, should never go out. You know, it's Jeremiah, as he says, fire in my bones. <clears throat> yeah. 
Yeah, Jeremiah 29 through 13. Then I said, I will not make mention of him nor speak any more in his name, but his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary with forbearing and I could not stay. So basically he's like saying, I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to, to, to stop it. Um, you know, I wanted to just be quiet. But your fire, your word is in me like a fire, and it has got to come out. And I couldn't, I couldn't hold myself. For I heard the defaming of many, fear on every side. Anyways, um, yeah, I mean Jeremiah, he know, he knows what it feels like, right? For thousands, hundreds, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people to hate him, right? And he's like, I'd rather just be quiet. He's like, I can't, I can't. So let the fire. On our altars of our hearts, never go out, brothers and sisters. Um, so then later on, we're talking about the mincha offering again, the, the grain offering. Remember, part of that was bur burnt on the altar, but the rest of it was given to the priests to eat. Uh, the grain offering, drawing near to Yahweh and offering our lives uh, to our fellow man and to him. You know, my, uh, the ingredients of the grain offering was uh, f uh, flour, of course. Um, it specifically said fine flour in the previous chapter, um, which if you didn't know back then they had to grind the they had to grind the wheat. And if you've never ground before, uh, I've done I've I've ground corn before. I remember I remember uh, um, back in back in school we were learning about the, the early settlers and, and and about the Native Americans and uh, and, and we they got a pestle a mortar and pestle and we were, we had to sit there and grind that corn. It's it's laborious. Uh, and to get it in a fine power in a fine form that was ex ex uh, extra laborious um, so anyways the flour the flour uh, was fine uh, then of course you've got the oil we talked about that last week about how the oil how expensive it was back then and the frankincense uh, especially think about this in the wilderness uh, where they're getting this stuff um, but of course he was pointing towards when they'd be in the land and and if they followed yah the, the the harvest would be bountiful and if the harvest were bountiful then of course they'd have plenty for these offerings and uh out of a willing heart um but um you know the oil could certainly sim uh, symbolize in this offering you had the fi the flour you know man has been likened to grain or, or even the word has been likened to grain before um uh, oil uh, symbol of the ruach hakodesh the holy spirit we know that uh, priests and kings were anointed with oil, First uh, Samuel sixteen thirteen. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him, David, in the midst of his brothers, and the spirit of Yahuwah rushed upon David from that day forward. Uh, Song of Solomon one three. Your oils have a pleasing fragrance, and your name is like purified oil. Therefore, the young women love you. And uh, you know his name could be his name is pronunciation Yahuwah Yahusha. Um, or it could be his, his, his Torah, his commandments, his precepts. And then Matthew 25, 1 through 3, Then the kingdom of heaven will be compared to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom, and five of them were foolish and five were prudent. For when the foolish took their lamps, they did not take oil with them. And so I just find it kind of interesting. And then uh, furthermore, oh, uh, next click. Uh, <clears throat> you know, we know that uh, the incense is likened to our prayers, and we had taken the book, this is Revelation 5.8, when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Same sentiments here in Revelation 8, 3 through 4. I heard, and another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before Elohim out of the angel's hand. So <clears throat> what are we seeing here? I don't know. I'm not trying to make something out of nothing here, but this offering uh, obviously was was special. It was a willing offering, uh, and it was very expensive. And uh, I, th I certainly think that we can um, glean some implications here um, with that. So let's keep going here at verse 16. Uh, just wanted to make mention, uh, of course, remember, reminder that the priests did eat uh, part of this grain offering. Um, this was part of their sustenance. It was part of how they ate. Um, let's see, verse 17, it shall not be baking with leaven. Just a reminder again from last week. A lot of this stuff is is uh, reminders from last week, but some of you may not have been able to see last week. Matthew 16, 11 through 12, how is it that you do not understand that I did not speak it to you about bread, but beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees? <clears throat> Sorry. Then they understood 
that he did not say, beware of the leaven of the bread, but of the teaching of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So, you know, his offerings shouldn't have any of the doctrines of men attached to it, uh, if that makes sense. So our prayers should be genuine from the heart, not some pre, pre-written, um, uh, you know, prayer that someone else wrote for you to just repeat every day. Uh, uh, hence, you know, what Messiah even rebuked about the Jews uh, of his day and, the, and their repetitive prayers and how they prayed. And guess what? They still do it the same way today. They still do the same rocking motion back and forth um, for time on end, uh, without end, and um, uh, repeating the same prayers every day. And uh, so point being is I think you can see some of that in here that he doesn't want leaven. He doesn't want man-made doctrines with his offerings, right? Uh, it's supposed to be holy, set apart. Um, let's go to verse 26 of Leviticus 6 and uh, speak to El Ahron. Um, all right, so this is something to think about, right? The the priests also ate the sin offerings. That's, I mean, we could probably have a whole discussion on what that means uh, for the priest to eat the sin. To me, the first thing that pops into mind is, well, didn't Messiah consume our sin with his offering? Um, maybe, maybe you know, it could be pointing towards uh, Messiah. But at the end of the day, uh, this was food for them. It was sustenance, um, tithes, offering, grain offerings, sin offerings is how the priest and their family ate. It was their portion. And uh, so obviously very symbolic in nature, but very practical in nature. A lot of people in Torah are... Um, against tithing, you know, because uh, for some obvious reasons. Number one, uh, for a, a, a lot of the churches that most of mo- most of the brethren have come from uh, probably abused it. You know, they spoke against the law, but yet, well, that part of the law is still still in, intact, right? Uh, and you know, churches and 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 preachers and and YouTube people, it just be, it's you see it all the time. It's just money, 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 money. You have their you know, money stuff all over the place, uh, all over their screen. It's like, donate here, boom, boom. It's just like, it's overwhelming. And so people are just like, I don't want any of it. Get me away from all this. Um, but like with some other things, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Um, I've often heard certain doctrines people switch to. They're like, well, because the Jews do it this way, I'm obviously going to do it the opposite way. In a lot of cases, that's right. Like we've seen with like the Pesach, uh, the, the Passover, the Jews added their Seder, uh, which... Uh, they don't eat the lamb, and they eat a whole bunch of stuff that Yah doesn't mention. And then you're like, wait, wait a minute. Why don't we just just do what Yah says? Why don't we just eat lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs? That seems a lot better. So in that case, yeah, we don't do what the Jews do. Uh, but I've seen it for other doctrines, you know. Um, but uh, point being is, um, here, let, me, let, me, let me come back full circle. I'm sorry. We can't just say just because Jews do it, it's wrong, you know. Um, and same thing with, you know, just because Christians do uh, some things doesn't mean it's just absolutely wrong. Um, like, you know, Christians, they, uh, they believe in the son of God, you know, the son of Elohim. Is that wrong? No, obviously, uh, how they serve him is incorrect, but isn't that our mission? Aren't they the, isn't the harvest plenteous? Isn't the harvest already white, uh, and ready for harvesting, but yet there's so many few workers. So, uh, priests, Eating the offering, um, you know, I'm in favor of of um, of you don't have to call it tithing, but a, a tithing type of system. I mean, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it here in, in a bit. So I think there's still some things we can glean from it. Um, and you know, our tithes don't even have to go directly to a ministry or priesthood. You know, I think some of our tithes today or offerings can go to the the widows, the orphans, the 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 poor, the just those in need, you know, those that calamity has struck in, uh, stricken, sorry, um, whatever it may be. So um, let's go to, oh yeah, Leviticus 6.28. That's an interesting passage. But the earthen vessel wherein it is sodden shall be broken, and if it be sodden in a brazen pot, it shall be both scoured and rinsed in water. So this is kind of setting us up for some future um, discussions regarding um you know, like, oh man, if a fly or an insect dies in my cup, do I have to break it? Um, and so this is kind of setting up the difference between different type of cookware. There's earthen vessels, which would be like uh, pottery, right? Um, it's ve- As we know, it's very porous and bacteria and things like that can get deep in there. Back, in, back then, 
I don't know if that was common knowledge. Uh, you know, I don't know if they had microscopes and all that kind of stuff back then. But now uh, we know why the, the you know, why there's a difference a, a differentiating between uh, earthen vessel and one like a brazen pot. We know a brazen pot, like it says here, can be scoured and rinsed in water. It can be legitimately fully clean because the surface is uh, mostly flat and not porous. Of course, if you zoom in on anything, almost everything has some um, has some porous elements to it. I don't know how to write English for that, but um, certainly earthen vessels are extremely porous, uh, giving uh, an opportunity for bacteria and other things to uh, uh, to manifest and things like that. So, uh, But that's going to lead up to, uh, this is talking about blood, of course, the difference between blood being in, in, a, in a pottery vessel versus blood being in um, uh, that. So obviously a lot of us, none of us are dealing with this anymore. Um, uh, but we all of all of us are dealing in food and day to day things where uh, other other situations will come up. So, with that being said, let's um, let's go to let's see what do I have here. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Uh, I meant to share some verses when I was talking earlier about how the priests ate the sin, thinking about Messiah. Uh, here's some passages. Second Corinthians five sixteen through twenty one. Therefore, from now on, we recognize no one by the flesh, even though we have known Messiah by the flesh. Yet now we know him in this way no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Messiah, this person is a new creation. The old things are passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now all these things are from Elohim, who reconciled us to Himself through Messiah and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, namely that. Elohim was in Messiah reconciling the world to himself, not counting their wrongdoing against not wrongdoings against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Messiah, as though Elohim were making an appeal through us. We beg you on behalf of Messiah, be reconciled to Elohim. He made him who knew no sin to be sin in our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of Elohim in him. And praise be to Yah for sending Yahusha to, uh, for us. Um, yeah, I'm not going to read that one. I think that was that was some notes from last year, and I'm just, yeah. Hey, brothers and sisters, I grow each year too. I, I look at my notes from last year. I'm like, oh, yeah, that's got to go. And then Yah gives more, right? He gives more each year. And I believe that's that's the goal here is we're going to keep studying this each year and grow closer to him and understand his word better that we can actually carry it out in our lives. Because remember, it doesn't matter how much scripture we know. What matters is how much can we apply to our life? Because hearers of the word are not justified, but doers of the word are justified before Elohim, Romans 2.13. So let's go to Leviticus uh, 7. We'll listen in, and then we'll uh, we'll have some things to talk about. So here we go. Vaikra, Leviticus chapter 7. Likewise, this is the Torah of the trespass offering. It is most holy. In the place where they kill the burnt offering, shall they kill the trespass offering, and the blood thereof shall he sprinkle round about upon the altar. And he shall offer it of all the fat thereof, the rump, the fat that covers the inwards, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is on them, which is by the flanks, and the caul that is above the liver, with the kidneys it shall he take away. And the priest shall burn them upon the altar for an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. It is a trespass offering. Every male among the priests shall eat thereof. It shall be eaten in the holy place. It is most holy. As the sin offering is, so is the trespass offering. There is one Torah for them. The priest that makes atonement therewith shall have it. And the priest that offers any man's burnt offering, even the priest shall have to himself the skin of the burnt offering which he has offered. And all the meat offering that is bacon in the oven, and all that is dressed in the frying pan, and in the pan, shall be the priests that offer it. And every meat offering mingled with oil, and dry shall all the sons of Aharon have, one as much as another. And this is the Torah of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which he shall offer unto Yahuwah. If he offer it for thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving matzah, unleavened cakes, mingled with oil, and matzah wafers, anointed with oil, and cakes mingled with oil, of fine flour, fried. 
Besides the cakes, he shall offer for his offering hametz, leavened bread, with the sacrifice of thanksgiving of his peace offerings. And of it he shall offer one out of the whole oblation for a heave offering unto Yahuwah, and it shall be the priest that sprinkles the blood of the peace offerings. And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave any of it until the morning. But if the sacrifice of his offering be a vow or a voluntary offering, it shall be eaten the same day that he offers his sacrifice. On the morrow also the remainder of it shall be eaten. But the remainder of the flesh of the sacrifice on the third day shall be burnt with fire. And if any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten at all on the third day, it shall not be accepted, neither shall it be imputed unto him that offers it. It shall be an abomination, and the soul that eats of it shall bear his iniquity. And the flesh that touches any unclean thing shall not be eaten. It shall be burnt with fire, and as for the flesh, all that be clean shall eat thereof. But the soul that eats of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings that pertain unto Yahuwah, having his uncleanness upon him, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, the soul that shall touch any unclean thing, as the uncleanness of man, or any unclean beast, or any abominable unclean thing, and eat of the flesh of the sacrifice of peace offerings, which pertain unto Yahuwah, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, saying, Ye shall eat no manner of fat, of ox, or of sheep, or of goat. And the fat of the beast that dies of itself, and the fat of that which is torn with beast, may be used in any other use, but ye shall in no wise eat of it. For whosoever eats the fat of the beast, of which men offer an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, even the soul that eats it shall be cut off from his people. Moreover, ye shall eat no manner of blood, whether it be of fowl or of beast, in any of your dwellings. Whatsoever soul it be that eats any manner of blood, even that soul shall be cut off from his people. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto the children of Yasharel, saying, He that offers the sacrifice of his peace offerings unto Yahuwah shall bring his oblation unto Yahuwah of the sacrifice of his peace offerings. His own hand shall bring the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire. The fat with the breast it shall he bring, that the breast may be waved for a wave offering before Yahuwah. And the priest shall burn the fat upon the altar, but the breast shall be Aharon's and his sons. And the right shoulder shall ye give unto the priest for a heave offering of the sacrifices of your peace offerings. He among the sons of Aharon that offers the blood of the peace offerings and the fat shall have the right shoulder for his part. For the wave breast and the heave shoulder have I taken of the children of Yasharel from off the sacrifices of their peace offerings, and have given them unto Aharon the priest, and unto his sons by a statute forever, from among the children of Yasharel. This is the portion of the anointing of Aharon, and of the anointing of his sons, out of the offerings of Yahuwah made by fire, in the day when he presented them to minister unto Yahuwah in the priest's office which Yahuwah commanded to be given them of the children of Yashrael in the day that he anointed them by a statute forever throughout their generations. This is the Torah of the burnt offering, of the meat offering, and of the sin offering, and of the trespass offering, and of the consecrations, and of the sacrifice of the peace offerings, which Yahuwah commanded Moshe in Mount Sinai in the day that he commanded the children of Yashrael to offer their oblations unto Yahuwah in the wilderness of Sinai. All right. Let's uh, go back to the beginning of 7. A couple things I wanted to mention here. Uh, here in verse 15, it says, And the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings for thanksgiving shall be eaten the same day that it is offered. He shall not leave of any of it until the morning. And so uh, eating it one day... Consider that with uh, even um, even a lamb. For those of you that have uh, of um, never been able to butcher your own animals, um, even a lamb can feed a lot of people. One, 
so consider uh, consider that there would be quite a bit of food here, and it says it has to be eaten in one day. Um, it, I just want to say, I think Yah does like a really big barbecue. Um, <laughs> Deuteronomy 12, I want to read this. It's, it's a little off topic, but a little on topic. Um, just kind of a reminder of the heart of the of the feast days, the heart of uh, giving in general. So it says, These are the statutes and the judgments which you shall carefully follow in the land which Yahuwah, the Elohim of your fathers, has given you to possess as long as you live on the earth. You shall utterly destroy all the places where the nations whom you are going to dispossess serve their, yeah, serve their Elohim on the high mountains, on the hills, and under every leafy tree. And you shall tear down their altars and smash their memorial stones to pieces and burn their ashram in the fire and cut to pieces the carved images of their gods and you shall eliminate their name from that place, which all of us have been doing kind of spiritually in our lives, right? Like getting all this pagan stuff out of our life. <clears throat> you shall not act this way towards Yahweh Elohim, but you shall seek Yahuwah at the place which Yahweh Elohim will choose from all your tribes to establish his name there for his dwelling, and you shall come there. You shall bring there your burnt offerings, your sacrifices, your tithes, the contribution of your hand, your vowed offerings, your voluntary offerings, and the firstborn of the herd in your flock. There you and your household shall eat before Yahweh Elohim and rejoice in all your undertakings in which Yahweh Elohim has blessed you. You shall not do at all what we are doing here today, everyone doing whatever is right in his own eyes. For you have not as yet come to the resting place and the inheritance which Yahweh Elohim is giving you. When you cross the Jordan and live in the land which Yahweh Elohim is giving you as an inheritance, and he gives you rest from all your enemies around you so that you live in security, then it shall come about in the place in which Yahweh Elohim will choose for his name to dwell. There you shall bring everything that I command you your burnt offerings and your sacrifices, your tithes, your contribution of your hand, and all your choice vowed offerings which you will vow to Yahuwah. And you shall rejoice before Yahuwah your Elohim, you and your sons and your daughters and your male, uh, male and female servants and the Levite who is within your gates since he has no portion or inheritance with you. So I read all that really to kind of read this. Uh, he's, he's like, gather everybody together. Let's have a big celebration. And so... Um, some of these offerings, specifically like the uh, the um, uh, peace offering, um, was is probably more than likely what this what we saw in First Samuel twenty was. Um, it says, "If your father misses me at all, then say David earnestly requested leave of me to run to Bethlehem, his city, because it is the yearly sacrifice there for the whole family." And so this is kind of what people would do um, if they were like, "Hey, I just want to give a peace offering and thank offering to Yahuwah. Uh, I'm going to offer up, uh, you know, this animal." And they would bring, right? They would bring, uh, they would bring you know, your sons, your daughters, your 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 um, basically your employees, um, the the priests within your gates. And so they would just bring everyone. It's like, hey, this is the uh, this is uh, my offering to Yah and and giving thanks. And and people get to park it, partake in it together. I think that's really a lot of the heart of what New Jerusalem, New Jerusalem, what a lot of people are hoping uh, to to go to to attend um is to get into the gates of new Jerusalem. isn't that isn't this a lot of what we're going to do it says that he's going to bless us in many ways we'll have uh vineyards and flocks and um wouldn't it be amazing you know if if all of his body came together on the same calendar and you know and uh with no with no doctrine to dispute because our great teacher is there in the midst of us and can handle all the disagreements and, uh, you know, can give us the entire rundown of, of everything. Um, really looking forward to that day. Um, really, uh, I really long for the day that all of us can do these things together. Um, I, um, really the division is really disappointing, you know, um, and it's, I know it's, not I know it, it seems to be inevitable um, because there is no, you know, human unified leader. And so until Messiah comes, I just don't know how any of us are going to get on the same calendar and all that. Um, yeah, I would have to really, um, show us how, how we can do that, you know, because people just disagree. Um, I was going to wait to mention this, uh, towards the end of, of the announcements, but, uh, speaking of which, for those of you that follow each week, um, you've heard me probably over the last at least year uh, kind of sh uh, see me step away from Jubilees and share 
um, my concerns with it. I, I didn't really go too much into detail only because I knew I just needed to make a kind of a one stop video or, or article that kind of just goes over all my feelings that I've, I've had towards the book and what that book leads to in other doctrines that I disagree with and, and so on and so forth. So I didn't put it out to be contentious with anybody. I didn't put it out to uh, hurt anyone's feelings or, or cause strife or drama or anything. But I, I took, I, I, I took the, the contents of that very seriously, uh, specifically because, uh, you know, I believe that um, I'm responsible for introducing Jubilees to many people. Not, not all people, of course. There's many other um, ministries that teach on that book. Uh, but I know I had my part in introducing that to book in, in people's lives. And uh, after I've had reached a conclusion that I no longer believed it was um, inspired scripture, I, I felt led that I needed to put out uh, a video about that and and uh, a topic that runs uh, very parallel to it. So I put that out um, yesterday. So um, if any of you were, were waiting to really see why I've stepped away from the book of Jubes fully, um, I've, I've put that out. Um, and again, not an attack on any ministry or anyone in particular. I'm not even calling out people that still believe it's, you know, scripture just because, you know, a year ago I did, or two years ago, I thought it was scripture. And, uh, you know, who am I to, to tell people what to do? I, I just put it out there as a testimony of what I've learned and what I believe right or wrong. Uh, you know, if wrong, may y'all have mercy on me. And, uh, if right, then I give y'all praise for leading me in that direction. Um, so sorry, little rabbit trail there. But anyways, point being, and uh, this is like Abraham stuff, right? Just taking care of people, feeding them. Like those of you that were, were with us toward the beginning of this Torah portion cycle, we read a lot through um, the book of Jasher and um, the writings of Abraham, um, and um, which, by the way, um, if people are like, you know, you know, if you're so hard on Jubilees, why aren't you so hard on Jasher? Um, you know, the one, the one thing that I've noticed... Uh, the difference between Jubilees and Jasher is, you know, if Jasher is guilty of um, additions, from what I've seen, it's it could be limited to embellishing stories, embellishing the numbers of how many soldiers were killed, or embellishing the, uh, you know, how grand the war was, or how big the giant was, um, things like that. But what I don't see in Jasher is additions to Yahweh's Torah, like additional commandments, or even encouraging uh, uh, the diminishment of some commandments. Um, but that is what I saw in Jubilees, and that's the difference. Um, that is the difference. And the adding to and take away from the Torah. Uh, and some people are, have elevated to Jubilees to being equivalent with Torah uh, in order to you know, kind of keep prop it up. I, I disagree with that. And that's, again, that's mostly why I wanted to put the video out. I do think there is some concern and danger with Jubilees and what it teaches. Um, and so I shared it in that video, uh, hopefully, um, hopefully received well in love, um, knowing that I'm not judging people for their calendars and things like that. But if I think there's a false book out there, I'm, I'm going to call it out. And it took me some time and there it is. Okay. Uh, so back on the, the Torah portion, sorry about that. Um, I, uh, what else did I want to read? Okay. Let's get back. <laughs> I got to get back to, this is why I have notes y'all. I got to get back on track here. Uh, but also, I don't know if you saw, but of course, uh, you know, the Thanksgiving offering, peace offering is, was to be shared with the poor. I don't know if you caught that in Deuteronomy 12. Um, and that's kind of what I was mentioning earlier is, you know, our offerings today um, doesn't have to just be to ministries and stuff or, or you know, a, a quote unquote church building or anything. Um, Messiah clearly said in Matthew 25, uh, if you, when you did it unto the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me. So if you're trying to like, give, you know, Yahusha or giving Yah offerings, man, what better way than to take care, help someone. Um, just, but also just remember, uh, you can also, um, help people too much. I don't know why I feel led to say this, but people can also abuse help and assistance and, uh, can, and, and it can lead to other things. The book of Narat Sarim talks about how sometimes it's even, it's more harmful to help, but, uh, you know, the help he's talking about is lending a hand to those who've, you know, life has, has dealt them, you know, a crushing blow. Um, which, speaking of which, another announcement, uh, if you go to the parable of the vineyard, um, actually, uh, I was going to show you, I missed a little screen sharing. Yeah, okay. So speaking of someone that needs help, um, if you go to the community tab here, by the way, this is the Book of Jubilees. Something I'm talking about. Uh, Bobby, 
brother brother Bobby, uh, amazing brother, uh, needs help. Um, he just had a surgery two day, uh, yes, two days ago, and um, anyway, he seems to be out of work for four weeks, and uh, he's the sole provider of his household. This is a brother in the faith. I know him personally. Uh, if you uh, can um, support him in any way, even if it's like just a couple bucks, help him out, please. Okay, um, we are going to get back to this tour portion. Leviticus seven eighteen. If any of the flesh of the sacrifice of his peace offerings be eaten at all on the third day, it shall not be accepted. Neither shall it be imputed unto him that offers it. It shall be an abomination. The soul that eats of it shall bear his iniquity. I feel like this is a really important precept in this Torah portion that you can kind of just read right over. Because um, here, think about this. Think about how awesome the Thanksgiving offering was. Let, let's say um, a cow today, a full size cow today, three thousand bucks. $2,500 worth value. I don't know, uh, rough, roughly. So you're offering that to Yah. You're sharing all the meat with everyone, right? And this is a most holy offering to Yah. But by disobeying one part of that entire process, it become, it goes from being a blessing and a sweet savor in Yah's eyes to what? To be an abomination, which we know that word is associated with some really bad things. I mean, some really bad things. Um, and so see what he's saying here, this stark difference. I mean, it's complete polar opposites. It's literally one of the most pleasing things in his sight to one of the most displeasing things in his sight. And it's and it seems like one little thing if they continue to eat more of the food on the third day. And so is it really about eating the food on the third day, right? Or, or what? I think what is he trying to say even in a greater way here? Uh, I think he's trying to say, listen and do exactly as I ask you to serve me. Because if you do it any other way, it goes from being the most favored thing that he could possibly have in his life versus an abomination. And again, what can you give the creator of all things who has everything, owns everything, what can you really give him? What you can give him is your obedience, right? It's he asked the question to Micah. It's so powerful. I should just read it. Um, oh, this is gonna be the tour portion of Rabbit Trails, but it's okay. Micah six. It's just so good. <clears throat> what Elohim requires of mankind? With what shall I come? This is Micah six six. What with what shall I come be to Yahuwah and bow myself before the Elohim on high? Shall I come to him with burnt offerings, with yearling calves? Does Yahweh take pleasure in thousands of rams and 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give him my firstborn for my wrongdoings, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O man, O mortal one, what is good? And what does Yahweh require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your Elohim? This is what he wants, right? And so the point being is... <laughs> We've got to do it his way or else he don't want it. Sorry for that little twang there, but he doesn't. He doesn't want it. Matthew 15, 1 through 9. Then some of the Pharisees and scribes came to Yahushua from Jerusalem and said, Why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? For they do not wash their hands when they eat bread. And he answered them and said to them, Why do you yourselves also break the commandment of Elohim for the sake of your tradition? For Elohim said, Honor your father and mother and the one who speaks evil of father or mother is to be put to death. But you say, whoever says to his father or mother, whatever I have that I would help you has been given to Elohim. He is not to honor his father or mother. And by this, you have invalidated the word of Elohim for the sake of your tradition. You hypocrites rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you by saying, this people honors me with their lips, but in their heart, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines and commandments of men. Because if things are being offered to him that go from being an amazing thing to an abomination, right? That's why they would be worshiping him in vain. And that's why we need to worship him exactly how he says. And remember, out there, you know, you all know that I'm very vocal about not doing Jewish traditions. But just remember, and I could, well, I'm saying this because I hear this a lot from a lot of you that I love that, that uh, you know, comment quite often. It, it's just like, it's like just because the Jews do it doesn't make it automatically wrong. We can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We have to investigate everything we toss off, 
So again, Passover is an easily um, demonstrable example. He says, eat lamb, bitter herbs, unleavened bread. And what do the Jews do? They eat pretty much everything else. No, that's an exaggeration. I'm sorry. But they, they don't eat the lamb, which as a child growing up in Judaism, I'm like, why aren't we eating the lamb? I don't understand. Why aren't we eating that? And then there's an egg. Okay. I know there's all kinds of cool symbols and stuff, but he doesn't want it. I don't, I don't think Yah even wants that Pesach Seder. Just my opinion. I'm not judging anyone. But if we can go by this precept and standard that he's setting here, does it only apply to this? Or can we, again, we learned this in uh, the Mishpatim, Exodus uh, 21 through 24. He can't write every single rule in the rule book to apply to every single specific scenario. But what a judge or someone that's in the seat of judgment can look at and say, hey, okay, this is how he feels on this topic. So certainly his heart would carry over if it was a different item or if the scenario was very similar. But the point is you can glean the heart of Yah through precepts. That's why, you know, when when people um, talk to me about a morning to morning versus evening to evening, obviously um, the unleavened bread and uh, atonement is brought up because he gives two examples of evening to evening Sabbath worship. And then people say, will say, you know, and then my thought is, well, he never commanded us to do anything morning to morning. So he's given us two witnesses as precepts is what he's looking for, right? And likewise, um, we all know that some of the feast days, like Sukkot, you know, Sukkot is a feast day. We're supposed to feast and whatnot. There's Sabbaths involved, but there's no mention of, well, how can we cook on the Sabbath and, and still have a feast? It's a Sabbath. What do you want us to do? There's nothing there for Sukkot, nothing. But in Passover, it says, no servile work may be done of you except that which every man shall eat. That may be done of you. So he's given his heart on, hey, okay, here's a Sabbath, and here's what happens with food. You can, no work, but you can, you can, do, you can cook. So he's given you his heart of what happens on the Sabbath. So in a, in, a, in a similar way, he's given us his heart here of one of the, mo- uh, as, uh, one of the most amazing offerings, this Thanksgiving offering, um, sharing it with Yah, sharing it with others, it becomes an abomination because the rules aren't followed. And we see that Messiah repeats the same thing here. This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they do worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. So we got to do it by the book. And this is, uh, this is you know, this answers a lot of Christians when, when they'll be like, he already said he hates all the Sabbaths and stuff, right? Like, why, do we, why are we doing it again? But what's happening here is it's because they're not doing it according to how Yah prescribed it. We know uh, we know through Isaiah and Jeremiah they were recorded be, they were recorded as having one foot in with Yah and one foot in with the pagan nations. Very similar to what we see with modern day uh, Christianity, which say you know they serve the they believe serve and believe in the Son of the Most High and want to follow Him, but don't actually follow Him. And we would prefer to to abide in, in pagan practices such as Christmas and Easter and things like that. So it's nothing is new under the sun. It just gets a facelift. Isaiah 1, 10 through 17 here. The, this is, and by the way, just as a note, verse 1 signifies he's talking to uh, Jerusalem. Uh, hear the word of Yahweh, rulers of Sodom, which he, he he's calling Jerusalem Sodom here. Listen to the instruction of our Elohim, you people of Gomorrah. What are your many sacrifices to me, says Yahuwah? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fattened cattle. I take no pleasure in the blood of bulls, lambs, or goats. When you come to appear before me, who requires of you this trampling of my courtyards? Do not go, do not go on bringing your worthless offerings. Incense is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath, the proclamation of an assembly. I cannot endure wrongdoing in the festive assembly. I hate your new moon festivals and your appointed feasts. They have become a burden to me. I am tired of bearing them. So when you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Yes, even though you offer many prayers, I will not be listening. Your hands are covered with blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil deeds from my sight. Stop doing evil, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, obtain justice for the orphan, plead for the widow's case. Listen, he didn't want any of this because they were wicked people trying to come and offer these offerings before him. These things became abominations to him because they were acting like the world and still yet wanting to come and bring in these offerings. They started doing it their own ways. Like, I mean, we know the sin of Jeroboam and the calf. 
they knew not to do that, but he's like, hey, I want to serve Yah too up here, right? It was even under a even seemingly good uh, thought process. Like, well, we just want to, you know, do that up here. And then, of course, the calf, you know, he built the altar, then, of course, the calf and all the other stuff. Then it was just straight wickedness, of course. But if we don't do it as he prescribed it, then he doesn't want it. All right. Um, and then, of course, we're not, uh, we don't have to need to read it. I know I'm going off on a way rabbit trail already. But Jeremiah, read it for yourself. Jeremiah 7, 1 through 11, basically just says, you know, um, this, is, this is the one verse I do want to read. He says, Behold, you are trusting deceptive, deceptive words to no avail. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, offer sacrifices to Baal, and father, follow other Elohim that you had not known? Then come and stand before me in this house, which is called by my name, and say, We are saved so that you may do all these abominations. Has this house, which is called by my name, become a den of robbers in your sight? Right? And so is, isn't this what modern Christianity does today? We are saved so that we can continue to do all these abominable things in his sight? This is why we have to continue to have an outstretched arm to our blind and deaf brothers and sisters. Because, yeah, that's it. Um, all right, so I've gone on a long enough tangent on, on chapter 7, but I do want to make mention, uh, you shall eat no manner of blood. I just want to make a mention, of, for those of you that people can... Um, I continue to hear this question. Um, do some research on uh, uh, myoglobin versus hemoglobin. So blood is hemoglobin. Myoglobin is something different. It's a protein that has pigments, which makes the uh, meat appear red. And it looks like like when you get a package of meat, it looks like blood's coming out, but it's actually not. It's uh, That's uh, myoglobin. Uh, and so the reason I'm saying this is some people have, you know, stopped meeting, eating meat altogether because they're like, well, there's meat, there's blood and everything. You know, I can't get away from this stuff. And uh, it's not necessarily the case. Um, I do think that uh, I do come from the perspective that I do think uh, meat is healthy for the body. Um, I think that we are different than Adam and Eve was in the garden. Um, uh, you know, I, I think they were more of spiritual uh, in nature than after, you know, coming into the, after leaving the garden and coming in here, I think part of that spiritual nature left. And I think the diet was different. And that's why you do see the patriarchs eating meat and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, okay. One last thing. And, oh yeah. In verse 36, um, it says, which Yahweh commanded to be given them. This is the priests, the children of Yashrael on the day that he anointed them by a statute forever. So this is the portion uh, of the offerings uh, given to the priests. Again, just kind of going over why did Yah? Why would Yah make a? Why would Yahweh make a system for the priests uh, to be fed the first fruits, the tithes, um, the offerings? Why? Why would that be his system? I think Sirach gives us a little sneak peek into the the heart of Yah, or maybe the 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 the, the thought process of it. This is Sirach 38, 24 through 25. It says, The wisdom of the scribe. Now, remember, the scribes were of the Levites. Um, so consider this right here. Let's just say uh, the, the wisdom of, or uh, well, just let me just read it, Adam. My goodness. The wisdom of the scribe depends on the opportunity of leisure. Leisure does not mean like rich rich person sitting at the pool drinking Mai Tais all day. Leisure means free time. F free time. Uh, and he who has little business may become wise. Uh, how can he who be, I'm sorry? How can he become wise who handles the plow and who glories in the shaft of the goad, who drives oxen and is occupied with their work, and whose talk is about the bulls? The point I'm making here is he. I believe that uh, Yah ordained it this way: that the Levites, which remember the Levites were the the priests, the high priests, the scribes, the musicians, uh, the um, the keepers of the of the. The, the building, right? They, they, they kept it up and they took the tabernacle up and down. Uh, and so I believe that he, he made it this way. So this is their full-time jobs. And this is why uh, um, looking at Messiah's words, a workman's worthy of his hire. And, you know, Paul has many words on this subject too. Um, you know, that talking about the ancient proverb about how you shall not muzzle the ox while it's treading the grain. You know, Paul asked the question, is it just, is, this, is he obviously just, is he talking about, grain, uh, just about oxen? Obviously not. He's talking about those who, who minister in the word. And so this is why, you know, I'm just talking with you all, um, again, uh, I haven't mentioned in a while, but when we do these Torah portions, it's like we're hanging out in my living room and 
we're reading the scriptures together and I'm sharing my notes. Um, yeah, what's really cool is those uh, that are here, uh, the local fellowship, uh, we get to we get to do this together. It's literally part of my favorite time of Shabbat is um, is we, we go over the Torah portion and the, the uh, prophets part and the New Testament and we read a chapter, we talk about it. Or read, and it's just hearing others and interacting is just literally one of my favorite times of the Shabbat. And um, yeah, which speaking of which, um, those of you that may not know, we do have a weekly um, uh, assembly here. I invite any of y'all, if you're ever passing through the Southwest Missouri area, to email us, reach out to us, and uh, find out where we're at. Uh, or you can just go to ancientpathrevivals.com, and then there's a fellowship tab, and it has all of our fellowship information there. So take a look. Come visit us. We'd love to uh, fellowship with you. Um, but uh, anyways, back to the point. This is why I have, uh, even though many have berated me for it over the years, um, you know, why this is my full-time job. Uh, I can tell you firsthand, you know, running a online ministry alone is, is a full-time job, let alone a in-person ministry and, and, uh, or in-person fellowship, uh, and, and whatnot. Uh, it's a full-time job. It's all encompassing between the time you need to study, prepare notes, um, you know, getting slides together, um, um, the comments, questions, the emails, uh, which by the way, if I'm, I'm, I'm currently a couple weeks behind on emails, so forgive me on that. Uh, but balancing that, of course, you know, here, then of course, the local fellowship, you've got um, discipleship, uh, which comes in many forms, uh, mediations, and, uh, you know, there's all, all sorts of things. And so I I appreciate the way Yah set this up uh, because, you know, having a full-time job and then trying to do all these things, to me, it would seem impossible uh, with the time investment because, you know, this is more than a full-time job. Anyways, I'm not sitting here just trying to justify what I do here. I, I, again, I'm, I'm just speaking with you all as if we're in my living room, not as, not as me as some grand teacher teaching all, all, all of my subjects. Uh, you know, what we need to be doing. This is me as your brother. We're just having a conversation. Um, and not to be, not that this is to be taken lightly as some just casual thing we do. This is, I'm talking the, the atmosphere is, and the way I speak with you all, it should be just brother to brother or brother to sister, uh, and likewise, uh, in return. Um, a lot of rabbit holes today. I apologize. So I think this is, you know, part of the heart of why Yahuwah created it this way, that the Levites, this was their full-time job. And all I'm saying is that I think that, you know, is, uh, can kind of translate in some similar ways today um and um yeah so let's go to let's go to chapter eight we'll uh listen in i got a few things on that and then we'll uh, finish up this tour portion stay to the end i've got quite a few announcements um and uh, i wanted to share with you all how to stay ahead some of you asked how to stay ahead of the reading schedule i apologize i'm going to have that uh, all in the information at the end of this video and show you where you can look it up at any time to always stay ahead of the readings uh, and also to know that usually we only go over the um we only go over the torah portion of the readings there's also the the writings the prophets and the new testament uh, we are going off of rob skiba virtual house church's schedule uh, and so I have failed to make that available for y'all previously, um, but that everything changes to date. And I'm going to get that information for you at the end, and uh, it'll be also in the description box below. I'll show you what that looks like, uh, those of you that are watching this video. I know some, we also put this out in um, podcast form too. So, All right, um, Leviticus 8. I'll stop talking. Vaikra, Leviticus chapter 8. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying, Take Aharon and his sons with him, and the garments, and the anointing oil, and a bullock for the sin offering, and two rams, and a basket of matzah, unleavened bread, and gather all the assembly together unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And Moshe did as Yahuwah commanded him, and the assembly was gathered together unto the door of the tabernacle of the assembly. And Moshe said unto the assembly, this is the thing which Yahweh commanded to be done. And Moshe brought Aharon and his sons and washed them with water. And he put upon him the coat and girded him with the belt and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod upon him. And he girded him with the belt of the ephod and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastplate upon him. Also, he put in the breastplate the urim and the tumim. And he put the turban upon his head, also upon the turban, 
even upon his forefront did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took the anointing oil, and anointed the tabernacle, and all that was therein, and sanctified them. And he sprinkled thereof upon the altar seven times, and anointed the altar and all his vessels, both the laver and his foot, to sanctify them. And he poured of the anointing oil upon Aharon's head, and anointed him, to sanctify him. And Moshe brought Aharon's sons, and put coats upon them, and girded them with belts, and put bonnets upon them, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he brought the bullock for the sin offering, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the bullock for the sin offering, and he slew it. And Moshe took the blood, and put it upon the horns of the altar round about with his finger, and purified the altar, and poured the blood at the bottom of the altar, and sanctified it, to make reconciliation upon it. And he took all the fat that was upon the inwards, and the caul above the liver, and the two kidneys, and their fat, and Moshe burned it upon the altar. But the bullock, and his hide, and his flesh, and his dung, he burnt with fire without the camp, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he brought the ram for the burnt offering, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he killed it. And Moshe sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. And he cut the ram into pieces, and Moshe burnt the head, and the pieces, and the fat. And he washed the inwards, and the legs in water, and Moshe burnt the whole ram upon the altar. It was a burnt sacrifice for a sweet savor, and an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And he brought the other ram, the ram of consecration, and Aharon and his sons laid their hands upon the head of the ram, and he slew it. And Moshe took of the blood of it, and put it upon the tip of Aharon's right ear, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And he brought Aharon's sons, and Moshe put of the blood upon the tip of their right ear, and upon the thumbs of their right hands, and upon the great toes of their right feet. And Moshe sprinkled the blood upon the altar round about. And he took the fat, and the rump, and the fat that was upon the inwards, and the caul above the liver, and the two kidneys, and their fat, and the right shoulder. And out of the basket of matzah that was before Yahuwah, he took one matzah cake, and a cake of oiled bread, and one wafer, and put them on the fat and upon the right shoulder. And he put all upon Aharon's hands, and upon his son's hands, and waved them for a wave offering before Yahuwah. And Moshe took them from off their hands, and burnt them on the altar upon the burnt offering. They were consecrations for a sweet savor. It is an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And Moshe took the breast, and waved it for a wave offering before Yahuwah. For of the ram of consecration it was Moshe's part, as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. And Moshe took of the anointing oil, and of the blood which was upon the altar, and sprinkled it upon Aharon, and his garments, and upon his sons, and upon his sons' garments with him, and sanctified Aharon, and his garments, and his sons, and his son's garments with him. And Moshe said unto El Aharon and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and there eat it, with the bread that is in the basket of consecrations, as I commanded, saying, Aharon and his sons shall eat it. And that which remains of the flesh and of the bread shall ye burn with fire. And ye shall not go out of the door of the tabernacle of the assembly in seven days until the days of your consecration be at an end. For seven days shall he consecrate you. As he has done this day, so Yahuwah has commanded to do, to make an atonement for you. Therefore shall ye abide at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly day and night seven days, and guard the watch of Yahuwah, that ye die not. For so I am commanded. So Aharon and his sons did all the things which Yahuwah commanded by the hand of Moshe. Okay, as you heard it right there, uh, Aharon and Moshe did all the things. All right, uh, just a couple notes on here. Again, a lot of these things, um, 
not a repeat. The, the consecration of the of the uh, priest is not a repeat. But uh, I do want to make mention. Uh, some of you have shared a video um, that a certain individual put out uh, saying that um, uh, recently uh, President Trump got this high priest anointing when um, the shooter apparently shot his ear and there was blood on his right ear and on his. Uh, his thumb and um, somehow it got on his foot too. And so uh, I'm not trying to be mocking. I just, some of you sent it to me. I don't know if I responded to uh, everyone, but I think it kind of went viral. So some of you have probably heard it Uh, without getting too far into it. I I just want to say I disagree. Um, And uh, you know, if, if there was some of some sort of anointing like that, uh, maybe some sort of instant transformation of personality and things like things like that. But anyways, like maybe like all of a sudden becoming like a servant of the most high and all right. I don't, you know, I don't talk about politics, so I don't need to get into it. I just want to man- mention that just because we're reading this verse that it was used for that. And I'm like, just, it was shared with me just within the last few weeks. So I just want to make mention that I do not believe that Trump was anointed with this high priest and anointing uh, or even priestly anointing. Sorry. Um, so, but what is kind of interesting about that anointing, it does involve the ear, the hands, and the toe. Um, lots of speculation to what it means. I've read some commentaries of what the, the minds of old thought on it. But, uh, you know, s- nothing conclusive. But certainly um, when there's this obvious touching and anointing, uh, and, and this is not the same as the anointing of the oil, so I can't really, you know, um, but it, I'm sorry. With the ear, obviously the hearing, the hearing of the word, hearing of the the voice of Yahuwah, the hands. Of, we know we've likened that to doing, to works, action. We've likened that to when we when um, um, the commandments, of course, are supposed to be uh, on our forehead and hands. Um, we know our thoughts, our actions. And then on the toe, you have walking, you know, walking in the way. So hearing the voice of Yah, you know, putting your hand to the plow as in, you know, doing the work. And, of course, the plow and, you know, any kind of ministry work too, but um, we know that these these individuals were anointed for ministry work, so that's what this specifically would be, and um, of course, walking, you know, walking in the way, stability, our feet are our stability, um, just some some thoughts, I've, I've read a lot of stuff on it, and just some of the things I've kind of gleaned and, and just thought of, and so, you know, maybe just uh, imparting here with divine favor, anointing, wisdom, understanding, discernment. Uh, Learn that, you know, especially being in leadership, you know, local and assembly, oh, discernment, uh, discernment and hearing from the Spirit um, on matters is so important, um, absolutely important. Romans 10, 12 through 17, for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same master over all is rich unto all that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved. How then shall they call on him, him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So just real quickly, you know, uh, we're just in, in, in relation to salvation, uh, we're, we're, we're seeing here, of course, um, uh, hearing, of course, with the ear. Uh, we see uh, talk, specifically talking about the feet here. Uh, not conclusive, but just it just got me thinking of this. Uh, and how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of shalom and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Yahweh, who has believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of Elohim. And um, I don't know, I just felt like to read that there. Maybe completely off topic, but just felt like to read it. So, um yeah, and then the other last thing, actually, I wanted to, not too much on here, the last thing I wanted to mention on here, we're going to actually wrap, wrap up the Torah portion, is verse 31. Uh, it says, And Moshe said to Elaharon and to his sons, Boil the flesh at the door of the tabernacle of the assembly, and there eat it with the bread that is in the basket of consecrations, as I commanded, saying, Aharon's and his sons shall eat it. And so there's other mentions of um, boiling flesh. And, uh, you know, I've heard over the years some doctrines. Uh, there's, there's always seems to be some interesting doctrines rega- re- regarding food. And no wonder, because food was, of course, the original sin. Uh, don't eat this. Uh, eh, did he really, really say don't eat it? You can eat it, right? 
Um, so obviously, uh, what goes in our mouth is important. Um, you know, I do think that what Messiah was teaching was in relation to washing your hands before you eat bread, not actually what goes in your mouth doesn't matter. Um, but, um, anyways, the point being is, uh, people have used this verse and others to put a doctrine together to, that says that you have to boil your flesh. There's no other way you can eat it. So as in, you can't have a steak, you know, grilled on the grill, you can't have a burger, so on and so forth. Some of you might be like, I've never heard that. That's weird. Um, I'm just mentioning this because, uh, again, we're hanging out in my living room and just mentioning things that I've come across uh, in in uh, uh, my not so many years in this walk. I know there's probably some of you listening that have probably been doing this as long as I've been alive, uh, 42 years. Um, and I've been aware of the way, well, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. The point being is, is I've just picked this up along the way. And... Um, I think a lot of us have picked up some different things along the way or, you know, picked them up and put them back down and be like, wait a minute, I'm going I'm to retest that. That's not, not so, uh, I've never clung on to this doctrine. Um, but, uh, the reason I say that it, I don't believe it's a command from Yah, even though we see several examples of cooking, boiling, uh, boiling meat. I mean, let me tell you something. I boil a lot of meat. Uh, to me, that's just slow cooking. Uh, I like to, I, I use my crock pot more than anything. And I love um, boiling my meat. Uh, but to command people and say that's the only way you can do it. So Exodus 12, 9, uh, it's talking about, the, of course, the Passover lamb, eat not of it raw, nor sodden it all with water, but roast with fire, right? And so people can say, well, he's giving an exception here, but does, I mean, is that how Yah rolls? He gives exceptions to break the commandments? I mean, that, that just doesn't seem like the heart that he has. I could be wrong, and I, I, I didn't, I'm not speaking for him. Um, I'm just saying he's not a, an Elohim of contradiction is what I've seen in my, in my examination, examination of the scriptures. And so if he's got a, 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 a law here that literally says, don't sodden it, but literally roast it with fire, you know, I'm just saying, Hey, that can't, to me, that just can't be a doctrine. Like I think boiling flesh is a great idea. And people usually say that because they say you have to boil it first to get all the blood out. And that's not really true. Again, Hence, uh, what we talked about earlier, doing our research of the difference between hemoglobin, which is blood, versus myoglobin, which rests in the muscle, muscle, um, and and meat tissue. So, uh, with that being said, uh, I want to finish just by saying, uh, in the Aramaic, it's interesting that it talks about how this whole consecration for uh, Aaron and his sons is because of the sin of the golden calf. So whether that's true or not, I don't know. I do want to mention, I, I want to share with you guys uh, some uh, announcements. First of all, some of you have been asking how you can um, how you can stay ahead of the readings. So um, I, I'm going to be leaving a link for all of the different portions. So this is the Leviticus portion. So we just did uh, Sav, right? So next week is going to be this one. All you got to do is just click on this link and it'll bring up all the readings. So as you'll see, we're just going to cover Leviticus 9 through 11, but each week there's other readings. There's, um, you know, it's a lot, a, not, not a lot, most often we'll read some of these through our studies, but uh, this is just way too much to go through line by line. We'd, it would be like a four-hour study each week, and it's just, it's not realistic for, for me and probably not for a lot of you. Some of you are like, it doesn't matter, I'll, I'll, I'll listen to a 12-hour study, and I get it. You guys are some hard chargers, but not everyone can do that. Uh, and uh, I talk fast enough, so you can't. I'm sure most of you can't listen to me on double speed or 1.75. I listen. Listen, I listen to most most things on 1.5, 1.75. Um, but I think I talk too fast already. Anyways, so uh, you can look up the the following week each week, and you can read ahead, or you can read the other portions. And uh, it'll be like that for everything else. So like this week, for example, we re read Leviticus 6, 8 through 8, 36. But here's the prophets sections. Um, and here's the New Testament sections. And so uh, this will be prepared each week for you. Uh, and, and where you can find that is, uh, let's just go back to the homepage. Let's, so like, let's go to last week's, um, last week's tour portion here. If you just go to the see more section here, Right here, tour portion schedule, virtual house, church, Rob Skiba. So you, you at least know that we're in Leviticus. And maybe next year on the calendar, I'll try to pre-plan the tour portions so you can know it. But here, uh, so like here, Leviticus, and that will take you to um, the page we were just at. And you can kind of find where we're at. So anyways, um, uh, what other announcements do I have? Uh, so again, Sukkot's coming up soon. Um, 
Uh, some of you are, I'm sure, on different calendars. So some some of you, Sukkot may already be, uh, no, Sukkot's coming soon for some of you. I'm so confused on everyone's calendar, which also, by the way, um, some people got upset with me of the timing of the, I, when I released the Jubilees, cal- uh, Jubilees video that it was on Yom Teruah for some people. I really apologize. I thought I positioned that uh on not on Yom Teruah, but I forgot some people are on evening to evening, some are morning to morning. I got really confused. It was not on purpose. I apologize uh, for anyone here that was um, uh, offended in any way on that. Um, which uh, happy Yom Teruah for anyone that's you know maybe maybe celebrating it just recently celebrated or getting ready to um, ours Yom Teruah. The calendar we do will be um, uh, it was the evening of October third uh, through the evening of the fourth. Um, I'm sure we got a, I want to have a web page for that, don't we? Um, yeah, we do somewhere. Uh, also, um, we are, Victoria and I are, uh, leaving for Vancouver. Um, and actually as, as, by, as you guys are listening to this, I'll actually already be in Vancouver. So I'm, cause I'm pre-recording this. Um, I want to show you all a couple things. So... This is Ancient Path Revival. This is the website I was telling you about. If you want to learn about um, uh, Ancient Path Fellowship, this is our local fellowship. We're up. We're updating this, but this is all our information here. Uh, and then also, uh, I should let you all know I'm not really good about. I'm not really good like with like social media and promoting my own stuff. So, Ancient Path Revival is here. Um, so a lot of our uh, outreach stuff and stuff that's not parable the vineyard related uh we're due on here so just kind of announcement um we are going to be in vancouver we're going to get a little get together in uh, vancouver so if you want to learn more information uh, you may want to subscribe to the ancient path revival site this is also where we're going to do future announcements and if we visit different countries different cities and have different meetups and things like that so uh, that's another announcement um oh wait did i screen share so you guys can see it yeah yeah okay okay um let's see what else do I want to show you all? Let me get here. Um, okay, so obviously, if you guys can stay in agreement and prayer with me, I need a new computer. Um, my situation here is I've got a later um, later uh, iMac. It's a wonderful machine. It was donated to me back in 2019. This is a massive machine, and it's been the workhorse for this ministry from 2019 till now. Uh, but it is uh, coming to the end. There's programs that um, Apple's smart. You know, it's the one thing I'm not super excited about when I switched over to Mac instead of PC. But um, uh, anyways, my Mac's just getting a little old. And uh, I think this it's what's the issue that's bleeding into the camera issue. Um, it's just I've had no avail. So would you guys stay in prayer with me? Um, I need a new computer. Um, what else? I think that was the only other announcement. So let's pray. And, and we'll end this week's tour portion and we'll end with a song um, from Left and Right Ministries. I, there's uh, there's no song I, I can't get greater than any other out of my mind. It's literally like one of the best songs I've ever heard in my life. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, Yahweh Most High, we just come before you. We bless you in Yahushua's name. And we just thank you so much for your word, which is the refreshing. Father, we thank you for the line by line, precept upon precept here, little there, little we thank you for your Ruach HaKodesh. Thank you for teaching us, Father. Thank you for giving us the greatest teacher ever, your son, Yahusha HaMashiach, the Word. Father, we just we give you all praise and all thanks and all glory and all honor to you, oh yeah. Uh, we're nothing without you. We're, if Abraham said he's dust, well, what are we, Father? We're but nothing in your sight. Bless us. Bless us with your Ruach HaKodesh and wisdom and understanding in your Word. And please bless us in the midst of the fire. Help us to be refined and to be conformed to the image of your son, Yahushua HaMashiach, and to be ready at his return, whenever that may be, O Yahuwah, soon or, or far away. Uh, we want to stay ready with the fire on the altar burning in our hearts at all times, Yahuwah, and never quenching. Um, would you guard us, guard our houses? Your word says that, our bodies are the temples for your Ruach HaKodesh. Oh, Father, guard the temple. Um, Psalm 127 says, even if the watchman watches without you, he watches in vain. Um, so who are we to even guard our own houses if you're not helping to guard it? Oh, yeah. Be with us. 
And we bless you in Yahushua's name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, brothers and sisters. So, uh, left and right ministries greater than any other best song ever? Question mark. You surround me like a shield, unseen, but stronger than. Any I can feel Almighty I I know you're You strengthen my hands My fingers for battle You've given me hope I put my trust in you Oh blessed be Yahuwah my rock and my deliverer There's no other like you, Yahuwah There's no other like you, oh my Savior Your mercy and power are greater than any Like you, there is none like you, oh yeah.